Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. Welcome to the family room. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome back to another wonderful Sorry. Wednesday. If only we knew who those kids were. Let us know where you're watching from. We are exhausted. Something's going crazy with the stuff. So we still I don't have care anymore. tech demons going on. I'll get it sorted out before Sunday, I hopefully. Know, for, for. I don't know. I'm so flustered. Um, Can you go to the events, please? Oh, yeah. Look, we're, we're so messed up. So, yes, uh, let us know where you're watching from on this Wednesday. We're here to discuss... Uh, a little bit of Sunday's sermon, because usually we just dive deeper into other things, which is perfectly fine, because I love having conversations with you that aren't interrupted by, hey, mom, every five seconds. Um, so I hate when the kids call you mom. <laughs> I don't even know where to go with that. Why don't you go ahead and give us the announcements? I'm glad you copied me with your shirt. Okay. Take it away. <laughs> All right, so we have, um, hey, Christy, um, we have hey. <laughs> Dining with Dignity. My watch is dead. That's fine. We have Dining with Dignity tomorrow night. The yep, third. The third. Um, the Feast of Trumpets. We have the Blood Drive is this weekend, so we have the Life South. They were here last time. You can make appointments online, and I believe I posted the link um, I posted the link in the event page on the website. Um, that was very difficult to get out. Sorry. <laughs> I'm very tired. We've had a long day. Um, and then Rival Night is Wednesday, October 9th. And do you want to say something about that? Because I clearly can't get my thoughts Don't miss together. it. <laughs> That's it? No. <laughs> oh. Revival Night. This thing is drooping like crazy. Um, I don't know. I felt so official like I'm on like a real podcast with this. Uh, Revival night is next Wednesday. We will not be here on the family room. That is October 9th. So if you're used to seeing the family room, uh, I'm sorry, but we will not have the family room. We are having an in-house only Revival night. That means we will not be live streaming it. Again, we will not be live streaming the Revival night. Um, so, I, and I think Brooke actually, well, they haven't seen it yet, but on the video that you guys have, I'm going to say it. If you're within some type of driving distance, you know, I mean, if you want to drive six hours to get here, that's awesome. I'll give you a shout out. Um, yeah, they're going to drive a hundred miles so you can give them a shout out. <laughs> no, not so I can give them a shout out so they can sit in here and experience it. Um, I think with everything that the church has been experiencing and the moving of the Holy Spirit and God just really pouring himself out in here, um, if you remember not this Sunday, but the last Sunday um, at the end of the Committed series, the Holy Spirit just completely wrecked this entire place and flooded us with his presence. So I'm completely expecting that, but on a much greater level. Uh, again, the revival night, that's October 9th from 6 until God only knows what time we will end. Kids are welcome. Kids are welcome. There is no child care. There's no child care. And we are not live streaming. Uh, so if you want to experience it, you have to come into the house and join us. Uh, I would love to see, shout out to Amanda and Mitch. We love you guys. We're praying for you, of course. Um, that was a weird extra ad. But um, it would be awesome to see every seat filled or even have to just literally take some seats out so people could just stand and sit. The idea is we will come in and just... Uh, Prayer, presence, and proclamation. And I'm stealing that. Did you just make that 20, up? No, I'm stealing that from 2819. Oh. The three P's. Prayer, praise, and procl procl <laughs> proclamation. Um, come expecting. We've got extra music. Um, there's not going to be anything. It's just kind of going to be bare bones. So the, the production team can um, actually sit in something and experience it instead of having to serve as normal. Um, but it's going to be a lot more music than normal, and I am going to be doing God willing, because uh, he can change it, and he has done that plenty with me. But I will be doing the parable of the sower, um, and you can find that in Matthew 13 or Mark um, 
but either, I haven't cho- p- figured out which one yet. But basically, the idea is extra worship and extra word where there's no time limits on anything. I mean, if, if you want to leave in the middle of it and get your kids to bed, no harm, no foul, there's no judgment, but we're just coming in to just truly be hungry and on fire for God and put no time limits on it, no agenda on it, and just see what he will do. Come completely expecting him to show up, especially with everything that's going on in the world right now, um, in Israel and obviously with the hurricane. Um, But yeah, just the revival night, again, October 9th, here in the house, no family room, no live stream. It's only in person, which I think it's going to be, be really kind of be better really because like you you'll just be experiencing it. And just keep in mind too, like like you said, people can leave, and also if you can bring your, you can bring your kids, that's fine. What you got going on over there? I don't know. It's um, but just keep in mind, like sometimes you say certain things in your sermon exactly that Yo, may yeah. not be appropriate that's for it. a five year old, and they might be wondering, you know. Yeah, I did say that Sunday. So yes, there is no child care. Kids are allowed in, um, but obviously. This is big church, as you know, some people call it, and there will be adult topics probably, I'm sure, at some point. We don't point. want the kids. I mean, but, we love having the kids, but it's like not the time to have them running around doing laps. You know, yeah, you no, still want not them. that. Yeah, that's not <laughs> no, going to be a thing. Not having distractions. Anyway, uh, Women's Fellowship Night is the next night, Thursday the 10th, and then costume dodgeball for the Fire Youth on the 20th at 6. I'm assuming they're going to wear costumes and play dodgeball. Um, I would guess. There's going to be prizes, apparently, and everything. They're going to dress the dodgeball up. That would be cool. <laughs> and then there's the annual, uh, our annual fall festival is on the 25th. That's a Friday. Fridays seem to work better for us as a church yeah. because... I know some people like to do them on Saturdays. Stop. But we do ours on Fridays. So food truck Sunday is going to be on that Sunday, the 27th. It's going to be... Um, Saucy Pig. I just completely forgot his name. He's a super nice guy. Um, hey, anytime you got barbecue. Yeah, and his food's so good. And then Baptism Sunday is going to be on the 27th as well. So that will be indoors. Last uh, yeah, time I think with so. the pool was just wild. It was a little bit too cold, and it was just too much hassle to try to heat it up. So we're just going to do a smaller. Yeah, I plan on tank. getting those little tanks. Um, Men's group. Being easier. I know it's November, but it's the first Saturday in November, and that's the pasta and praise night. And I won't go much more into November, but we're going to have you know a friendsgiving potluck. We're going the youth is having their own friendsgiving. Um, we got a couple other things coming up in November, and then this Sunday. Um, I got a limited amount of the car decals, oh, yeah. and I'm giving them away. One per driver, please. You know, don't grab someone for your your mama, sister, and cousin, and damn, because I only have a certain amount. Um, so I just want to make sure everyone that wants one to put them on their car will have one. So, exactly. And I know a lot of people have been asking um, this hurricane hurricane uh, prep thing has been crazy, and we have been overwhelmed with donations. It's been amazing. Yeah, it's been a huge we just blessing. Spent the afternoon, Jared and I loading up my parents' black trailer, uh, enclosed trailer, and we still have the food to get in, and we still have the um, like cleaning supplies and paper towels, and I actually set aside just a couple totes. Um, my The girls helped me organize it this afternoon, and we put like uh, toothpaste, toothbrushes, uh, to- just toiletries, and, um, you know, feminine products and um, baby wipes and diapers. And that's what, there's a, a place in Palaka that's collecting boxes to immediately fly out to the areas where no vehicles and it's only by mule or by plane. And it's in Palaka and they're using their own instructor planes to fly these so products cool. out to Asheville area. So I messaged them today and they said that they'll take whatever I can give them um, but because of the weight restrictions with the plane, they can't take bottled water. They can only take, you know, they can't take used clothes. I don't, I don't know why, but they had a specific list. So I got that. We got set that aside. And then um, we're still getting donations in. So I planned on kind of continuing to at least collect. It's really stressful. But, I mean, we have our house. We have yeah. clothes. We have everything. It's, it's, so uh, I can't imagine We dodged a bullet on this, on this side. And if, if nothing else. It could happen else, to us one day. And it could. Um, but I think 
Then one thing I definitely want to highlight, and real quick, uh, Kathy Murray, no, I'm not recording it. There's not going to be a DVD. It's not going to be uploaded. That's nothing against the online audience. Obviously, we love our online audience. Uh, but this, for our first revival night, I just strictly and specifically want it for in-house, for, for our people. I mean, I know you are our people, too. Um, but uh, we just feel led, and I feel led to just have it um, completely just everything in here only. Uh, we will be doing more random and that's revival not, and nights. And that's not because we don't want um, anyone seeing it. It was more on because the only person that will be serving is me on sound and then the girls the singing. Team. And that's it. And if we have to do production, that means we need about five more people yeah. to be working. And we don't want to do that. And yes, we no. can set cameras, but you, the way our cameras are, you still can't just set every single camera. No, and I have move every too much. Shot. Yeah. I mean, we could do a zoomed out so. one, but I, I just, I, I feel led that for this one, um, I think it's it's just for for the house. Um, and October nineteenth, I'm sorry, Christy, I completely forgot about that. Um, October nineteenth is the 4S Upscale Yard Sale fundraiser. That's okay. the one that they do here. Yeah. Um, that they you know sell and definitely. Uh, with all this, the clothes that we've been getting into, I would love to keep the momentum going, at least for the clothes. And if you guys know anybody that they have used clothes, or if you're getting rid of clothes, contact Nicole Hallwood, um, or just bring it by the church at, I think she said 6 or 6.30s, 6.30s. 6.30 on Wednesday, because they're out there now. on Wednesday, she's out by the back sheds. Just bring it. She said, mark the bag for us, and they can always use clothes for the homeless. And I think they needed men's clothes and men's shoes a lot really bad. So, you know. um, Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anyway, sorry. What was it? I forgot (laughs) where else I was going. Um... That's gonna be a train wreck tonight. We've no, had... it's not. We once we get going. Okay. That's just enough. We spent twelve minutes eight. doing announcements. No, um, I, I'm excited. Oh, and with uh, the hurricane. Oh, that was where I wanted to say. Oh, with and the hurricane thank you stuff. To Adam Posey. Adam yeah, Adam Posey. Shout out to him. Out and I'm drawing a, a complete uh, brain toot on. I didn't want to say the f word. <laughs> Nobody can um, say other words. Uh, yeah, I can't. For some reason, I, I'm drawing a blank on his business name. But he's bringing a trailer up, and he's offered to drive as well. Um, so shout out to your parents. Shout out to Adam um, to be able to help us get those supplies over there. And for those of you, um, I recommend, obviously, just praying for all of the families involved. Um, and it's not just the people that lost their home um, and, and those that 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 have been affected by losing also their life or their family members losing their life. Um, I've seen reports since I used to be a utility worker, and I hate to, I know you're going to, whatever. Were? Yeah. Oh, oh. For longer than two years. I didn't know that. But, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, so I still see, and I've been in contact with some of my Lyman buddies that are still out there. Uh, there's reports that they're going in and finding um dead bodies so pray for them because that's hard for anyone to see that's just not I was going to say that's not accustomed to seeing that but I don't Mm. think anybody should really be accustomed to seeing that and also uh, be praying for the church to wake up and be praying for peace to return to Jerusalem Uh, if you don't know what's going on Iran attacked Israel and we're not here to dive into all that but be praying for them. Um, we are we are running out of time. And if nothing else, just make sure you're praying, getting on your face before Jesus and staying ready so you don't have to get ready. Uh, but with that, I'm ready to jump into some type of discussion. <laughs> so Sunday's message, uh, drop your favorite quote if you had one. Uh, my dad spoke on the exchange, the uh, exchanging the truth for a lie, and his text was all out of Romans 1. He kind of went from verse 18 until I think 30 or 32 it was. Um, but even without that, just just where we are as a society and seeing how many how many things have been exchanged for lies and how much truth gets. Uh, Oh man, without sounding like a conspiracy theorist, but how much truth literally just gets suppressed. Um, I mean, we've seen it recently with uh, TikTok where I was preaching that one time and you had the phone set up and uh, they they kicked us off. You all right over there? Yeah, they kicked sorry. us off for hate speech. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's nothing coming from this platform and this stage 
that is hate speech. We love everybody. We love you as you are, like Jesus does, but we do not want you to stay there. Neither does Jesus. Um, and, and, you know, if you don't hear anything else tonight and you just randomly came across this video or if it pops up on a reel or something, you know, God loves you the way that you are. That's the truth. The lie that has been more accepted into society is that God will just let you do whatever you want. And, uh, I mean, he will let you do whatever you want, but he loves you, but he doesn't want you to stay there. Um, and, you know, the reality is 10,000 years from now, a thousand years, a million years from now, we're all going to exist. We're all going to be alive. And does that, that, that doesn't like trip anybody else out because I think I'm the only one that trips out. I said that to Milo like, the other day and she's like, what? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I, whenever you guys say that, sorry to interrupt you, but I'm going to keep doing it. But like, whenever you say that type of stuff, I, I, bleh, I don't know. Bleh, You're like, not, bleh. uh, you you are a soul with a body. We yeah, were we were created to be. I know, and of course it's weird. I mean, the people that that don't act like the Bible and Christianity has weird stuff about it. I mean, go read Ezekiel and the description. Just go on YouTube and search biblically accurate angels because mm -hmm. it's not the people in togas and sandals running around. I mean, you got the ones with the four faces where you've got the face of a human and an eagle and a lion and an ox and there's four wings and two of the wings cover their body and they got bronze legs with hooves like calves. I mean, it, that's weird. There's weird stuff. There's angels that look like, like a that. wheel. I'm going to be. <laughs> no, those are, those are the angels. Upset. We're going to be as we are. Probably not going to have tattoos anymore, but that's fine. Although, I don't know, because Revelation says that Jesus uh, had a uh, king of kings written on his thigh. So, no, we're not going to have tattoos in heaven. But it's going to be an amazing thing. And one of the greatest things that I've heard about it, and this is like completely going the rap, down the rabbit hole, is... There's Ooh. so much we don't know about heaven because mm. I think even the little glimpses that we get is just, it, there's, there's no way to fathom how glorious it's going to be, how beautiful it's going to be. I mean, it's just, God didn't paint the picture because I think it's just literally going to blow all of our minds when we get there. Well, I guess it would be not just heaven, but the new earth. Okay. That's eschatology for you. I don't even know what but that means. that's the study of the end times. So we're here to discuss trading the tr <laughs> the truth for a lie. That's eschatology. Um, and we see, we see, whoa we see this constantly uh, with a lot of stuff going on right now, where it's just like I was saying with the truth getting suppressed, and you know they they come in and they twist scripture and they they tell you one thing and it's a completely different thing, and you know you you see it with. Um, uh, what was that that city where the gangs were coming in and breaking into the Colorado? Um, so yeah, somewhere in Colorado. But I don't remember the city, but they were breaking into the apartments and everything, and they were like shutting everything down. Mm -hmm. And this sheriff had to get on there and, and like try to tell people what was going on, but it was just getting suppressed. So we're just living in completely weird times, and I no, expect they, they in any moment to see YouTube or something go down. They said the sh the. Uh, hmm. She's um, mm. the the I think it was uh, it was a female commissioner or something or maybe I'm thinking of Batman I don't know but it was like a female I don't, I mean, you know how tired I am <laughs> it's been a very emotional I've cried like seven Gordon. times today it's not even funny um, anyway so she said everything that was going on and they told her that she was overreacting and then making <laughs> some of the things up and then she posted. She posted the security videos of these gangs that busted into the apartments, you know, all the immigrant gangs, and they all were armed and literally, I mean, they weren't door, it wasn't DoorDash. It was clear what they were yeah. doing. And they were like, you took, you stop over. Yeah, it's, we're, we're living in just, it's, it's very strange times. And I think uh, it's honestly, whoops, it's only just going to get weirder and weirder. Um, I mean, you see it in the Bible with just the storms and hurricanes and tornadoes and wars and rumors of wars and plagues and famines. I mean, we're just and speaking on getting that, right on there. Um, and speaking on that, it is going to get harder and harder. It's going to get harder and harder for people to want to take care of each other. I'm seeing it now. Yeah. I'm watching it now. And, and like, it just getting this donation drive going 
I was very surprised. That I mean, was I'm ridiculous. Grateful people, for the there, there was like outpouring. there was a lot of great people, you know, people that were being awesome and nice and sweet. And I don't ever want to downplay that, but there were some people just being nasty. Mm-hmm. Like, oh well, I mean, it was just it was nasty, and it and it just and you, I guess, if you do that over a certain amount of years, you know, you get burned out, and it's like I never want to get burned out. I never want to be in a situation you know, 20 years from now or whatever to where people just burn me out because it, I'm I just, no, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to let people put me to that point. There's a, um, that's exactly, but it's going to, it's going to get to where less and less people want to help everybody out. Um, because of a, either how bad stuff gets and it's just too much of a hassle to help everybody out or help people out. And that doesn't, am I making sense? Yeah. So, I guess I just want to, anyone watching, if they've just been feeling super just burned out with people lately, I mean, I get it. With nursing, um, you get real burned out with people when you're just trying to help them over and over again, and then they're screaming at you, hitting you with telly boxes because you came into their room. (laughs) But, you know, um, yeah, I just, I don't want anyone to... I just hope that people just don't get burned out because now as stuff starts happening, we're going to need each other more and more and more. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's I can't hard to remember. Keep talking to myself. I'm what? not as good as it as you. No, are. you're fine. I was trying to find, because I'm drawing, I'm just drawing so many blanks tonight, but there's a scripture where if you're dealing with like bitterness or something in your heart or resentment towards someone else, as you're coming to the altar and you still have that down, you're supposed to go make things right or at least attempt to make things right or just to unburden yourself mm-hmm. from that bitterness or anything like that. So uh, you're spot on. It's just you're seeing people. I love that. Creation is crying for its redemption. That's what I posted this morning. Um, you're seeing people, and it is just going to get worse. You're seeing, I mean, as we were calling for donations, we, we all have seen the destruction and heard of the destruction and like that, we're just like, hey, we need to get some supplies to run to these people because they need help. And as a church, that's what we're called to do. We're supposed to be caring for people. We're mm-hmm. supposed to be loving people, feeding the home, or the, yeah, feeding the homeless and the needy, and taking care of the least of these. Because uh, in newsflash, if you don't know this, how you treat someone else is how you treat uh, Christ. So, and especially as a Christian, so how so you treat <laughs> how you treat another Christian is how you're treating Christ. Uh, and, and there's even the the reality of you'll run into um, you you can run into homeless people or some other person that maybe they'll come up and they'll they'll want to say a word for you and it's like spot on and you'll just reject it and you don't even realize that that was an angel in disguise trying to steer you back onto the right path and it is just a sad thing it's like you know i've really felt god shifting and and i'm grateful to have you with all that you're doing and this just seeing your heart behind this thing uh and i don't want to whatever i don't i don't want to say too much you know on just the conversations that we've had with uh, other You'll save it for Sunday. Other places, yeah, I'm sure people. it'll come spilling out. But other places that haven't that. jumped on helping the people that have uh, these people have lost everything, mm-hmm. everything, and it's like, where is the drive to want to help? I'm these really people? disappointed in my age group. I'm like, I'm super disappointed, and I didn't plan on saying this, but I'm just, I'm so, I'm so disappointed. Well, look where we are. We're lovers of sales. We're the selfie generation. We're all about TikTok and getting views and likes and subscribers and everybody look at me, look at me, and then. I just, I go go through, you know, Facebook and we've got, and I, I don't mean to say that you should just stop living your life because another I don't know, maybe it's just a different way of thinking now for me, but I just, it, 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 I just was so disappointing. You know, I've got friends that have businesses that could help. Nothing. And they don't care. Or you see and that it, we call like, for donations and then they're posting stuff that they don't want or need anymore on Marketplace just to make sale. some money. And I'm like, I get it. Like, I mean, you have to support yourself, obviously. And maybe people selling, because I don't know their story. Maybe they've got five bucks, you know, and they're trying to sell their clothes to make some money. I don't know. But how much more of a blessing would it be to get? Because the Bible tells us it's better to give than to receive. And when you you give, I mean, that comes back to you. Mm-hmm. And it can come back 30, 60, 100 fold. I, mean, so. I had a hard time emptying my um, the closet on the other day because I, I literally, it took everything I could not to take, like 50 of 
your shirts that you were donating because I sleep in your shirts. And I'm like, oh, I've been waiting for him to get rid of this one. I'm like, oh, and then I said, no. And I put it in the bag and I was being good. But my thought process was, as I was going through, um, I was going through my clothes and I was just looking at them and, and well, I might wear this, you know, if I lose just like a little bit more weight, this top would fit me again. And it was really cute. And I love this top. And I was just going through my closet and, and I ended up having like three shirts I was going to give away. <laughs> and I just sat there and I'm like, dude. I had that. You're moment. not gonna wear this shirt. First I had a off. couple of those. I was like, oh, I might Second, like this. I haven't worn this. You haven't while. worn like, this since before Riley was born. So like, just put it in the bag. And um, I don't know. I just I'm disappointed. And you know, maybe my expectations for people's is ridiculously high. I don't know, but it just made me really just frustrated and upset that everybody's just, you know, at least find a group you can donate to and at least like share it all. Put your hat on backwards. Wow. Find a group you can like share on Facebook. <laughs> don't, we are live Mitch will get it. I don't on care. a church podcast. Um, no, find but a have group you seen that the real? Donate to, you know, or even <coughs> just donate a couple bucks to Good Samaritan. Or, I mean, I, I think I shared several of the ones on Facebook. Several of the ones, several other ones, several of the ones on Facebook that were actual legit. Um, huge companies that were going into Asheville, going in North Carolina, blah, 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 blah. Send them 10 bucks. I mean, you have no, 10 bucks is a case of water. And that's what they're doing. And it, just send $10, you know. And maybe people are doing that, not posting, which is like absolutely it could be. great. There's a lot of people that, you know, that they'll do something but without just, needing recognition. I feel like we just could have done so much more. Of course. You know, and, 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 but, and the other thing is, too, is, like, I know a lot of these people take their little boat and go play in Senahatchee and you sit at the restaurants. I'm calm. <laughs> sit at, you know, go drinking at the restaurants, use the boat ramp, use, you know, the little town, blah, 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 and go do all that stuff. And then when it comes and gets destroyed, where are you at? Where are you at? You're going to pick a new... You're going to pick a new place to go drink and play that's not messed up. And then when that course, one gets messed you up, you're going to dip spot. on that one, too. I mean... That made me really mad. You know what I mean? And I just... Look at you. I'm good. But that was upsetting. It's called righteous indignation. Uh, and well, as I, I was telling you, the more, the, more, the more deeper you go with God, the more disconnected you get from the world. And the further you go and the more your relationship goes with God, the more you find yourself looking at the world through the eyes of Jesus, through the eyes of the Holy Spirit. And, th and that's that frustration you get because you're like, how do you, your eyes get opened. The scales fall off and you're, you're sitting here watching it happen and you're watching um, Christy, I'm going to Things worry about fall others. apart. Y'all stress me. And out. you're watching the truth get changed for a lie, and you're watching all this, and you're and you're just like, how do you how do you guys not see this? But it, that's that's what's upsetting and frustrating as as a Christian. And it's not that we're better than other people. It's just that our eyes have been opened and the scales have fallen off. I mean, have fallen off. That's that's literally biblical. That the God so that little G is, of this done, world. You've done like some of the worst stuff. Yeah. It's it's not so much it's it's not when you get like this it's not because you feel like you're better than other people and I'm sure there's people out there but it's because you've literally seen the worst of the stuff and you've gone through all, a lot of temptations and you've gone through a lot of these things and you're dealing with all that and you came through the other side and you know how hard it was to come through the other side so you want to tell people um I don't I can't like, it's it's just the it's I mean it's just that it's just it's Jesus and the Holy Spirit I mean they're working in you they're changing your life and everything your mentality your personality changes and it's just you've been woken up you're you're awake now you're in the reality and it's the like I said the further you go the more you press into God it, the more you seek the truth which is Jesus the more disconnected you you just get from the world and it, it, the more that you know like Netflix doesn't have an appeal to you anymore the more that mm -hmm. the old shows the old music the old outfits the old everything just doesn't appeal to you anymore because you're just getting disconnected from it and you're starting to see just how Satan has blinded people in the world uh, you know and how how much he's got them under his control and that's why you know I, I've said it and Philip Anthony Mitchell has said it just they're they're prisoners of war and the the problem with Christians 
in a general aspect, the sad thing is that we're not being raised up to be God's army and soldiers anymore. We're just we're just sitting in church and getting comfortable, or we're completely getting led astray with with false prophets and bad teaching and bad doctrine and bad theology, and we're just kind of going through the motions. And you know, I mean, it's like. However many percentages of, of churches just they just want to fill feel the seats mm-hmm. fill the seats I said feel the seats um, and it's just that's that's not obviously we want to fill the seats but we want Jesus to fill those souls we want souls to be one oh, for a the kingdom that has is seven hundred eight hundred people and none of them believe in Jesus yeah I mean that's <laughs> that the, the the what what's the most depressing thing. What's more depressing than an atheist or somebody going to hell is somebody that calls themselves a Christian is going to, there's, there's a lot of those that's going to end up in hell mm-hmm. simply because they're sitting under the wrong person. And not only that, they're just, they've got no actual um, relationship for their self. And yeah. that's why I, I say it all the time when I'm preaching, like it, my job is just, to stand up here, pro- proclaim God's word, and you're supposed to take that home, feed on it, go seek it out for yourself, test me, because, you know, sometimes things will come out wrong. Sometimes, uh, you know, I might say something that's not exactly right, you know, it just comes out the wrong way. And so it's important that you don't just instantly believe everybody you hear. Always go out and, and seek it for yourself. And I just think with the reality of the situation that we're in right now where we find ourselves is people just come in and they want the pastor to do everything for them. And the downside is where you get the exchange of the truth for a lie, you've got these pastors that are really just nothing more than than predators in the pulpit, as I've said before, and their whole their whole thing is just... They'll tell you, you know, they'll sprinkle in a little bit of the truth and you don't go search it. And then you, what? Peepees. They they sprinkle, I don't know what that was. They sprinkle in. in the pulpit. uh, uh, Yeah. They sprinkle in a little bit of the truth, but their whole goal is to lead people astray. Um, and, And that's just the thing. I mean, it sucks. It sucks to watch people that are just sitting in churches and they're going to churches and they they think they're following Jesus uh, but they are completely just not living godly lives they don't really have any biblical knowledge or on the other side they have biblical knowledge but they have no connection to their heart because I mean you can read the Bible through and through through and through and through and through back to front as many times as you want but when you're not seeking the truth am I boring you? No I'm just really tired I'm, <laughs> I'm just sorry. kidding loaded in time. Um, if you're not seeking the truth and you're not wanting to have a relationship with Jesus it's, it's just not real to you and so none of it has any meaning that's a good comment. So Ryan says. I was waiting for you to see. <laughs> Ryan says, and I'm going to bring this up either Sunday or in another sermon. I was trying to see what these. I'll have to go back and read these comments because there's so many, and I hate like just pausing forever to read them. So Ryan, that's a good comment. Uh, what about these? All these millions of people uh, being led astray by mega churches. That's a better voice text than I've ever done. So <laughs> you should see my voice text are like habidi bidu who. Here's the thing. There, I say, so in America, ninety. I think because we just talked about this the other day. Ninety-eight percent of churches in America. Can I have, say something really quick? Yes. Sorry, it just came. Then I'm gonna forget. But, and I'm not going against this comment. But we only know, like, I don't think it's the size. I get where he's going with this, and I know where you're going with this. But I just, I just like popped in my head. <laughs> It's it's funny to me because it's not the size that's leading, like they say, the mega church is in a derogatory term. It's not the size of the church, how many people go to it, and I'm so bad at explaining things, but it's not the size of the church and the people going to it, like the mega church thing. There are very small churches leading the entire congregation astray. Mm-hmm. I know of a couple, and... We don't know about them because they're so small. We're focused so on the I other So I think ones. it's just all over. It's just what about churches leading these people astray? Um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like there's I get actually what he's saying because obviously they have more an impression. You know. You know what I mean? So I, I, that's kind of a little bit more stressful because they've got a bunch of people that they're impressing in, in on. Mm-hmm. But it's not just mega churches. It's 
it's churches. There are churches that are, you know, 20 people here, you know, anywhere. Yep. Sorry. There's <laughs> a uh, train of thought. There's a reel that Mark Driscoll has put out before of a, I don't know, j- just judging by the way that the building and the pastor looked, uh, I, I would guarantee it's a very small church, and I could probably tell you the denomination, but I'm not going to go there. Um, but in this clip, the guy, he's one of the King James only Baptist. people. Uh, okay, I wasn't going to say it, because I was trying to be nice. <laughs> Can I finish my train of thought for a few minutes? <laughs> so Sorry, he's got, you. he's one of the King James, King James only preachers, if you will. And he's standing there and he is uh, incredibly obese, incredibly obese. And oh he's sitting there talking. I'm not going to harp on that, oh no. but that's a red flag already because if you don't have discipline in your private life, you don't it's have in discipline. The Bible. And that, yeah, it's also in the Bible. Glenn you should be. This is a holy temple. You should be taking care of it. You should be eating healthy. You should be working out. You should be exercising. That adds value to your life. Do with that what you will. But this guy stands up and he says, with this text, with the King James Version, you just he told me to can, calm down like five seconds ago. And let now me finish. You're he can correct the original Greek with the King James Version. Oh. Absolutely not. And after he says that, the clip ends and Mark Driscoll says, well, you can't even button your own jacket. Because yes, he could not button his own jacket, but he was very pompous, very arrogant. And he was talking about how the King James can correct apparently the original Aramaic and Greek and Hebrew. Absolutely not. No, it can't. So the other problem is with the mega churches. In America, 98%, and this is probably an old statistic, but 98% of churches have less than, I think, 200 people or less than 50 people. It's something small. Dad will probably chime in on this in a minute, and I'll correct the numbers. So if you have over, and I'm pretty sure it's over 200 people or 50 people, whatever it is, if you have over that, you're in the top 2% of churches. The problem, yes, with the, with the well, there's not really a problem with the mega churches because they're reaching people. Uh, obviously, yes, there are, are false prophets. There are people that are, hold on, that are leading people astray that have mega churches. But a lot of people already just start talking crap simply because it's mega churches and they think size automatically means false prophet, automatically means they don't have any biblical teaching, automatically means they're, they're they're, they're running I mean, people I astray. I exactly. Did. But Never. that's not the case. Yeah. Let me open your eyes. Uh, Jesus was a mega church preacher. When he oh, fed snap. the 4,000, that was just the 4,000 men. That wasn't counting the women or the children. And then there was the feeding of the 5,000 men. That wasn't counting the women and children. Uh-huh. I've heard numbers that this is probably anywhere between fifteen and 20,000 people when he gave those two sermons. The 4,000 and the 5,000, that's the men only. And just by those numbers alone, Jesus would have already been a megachurch pastor. The other side, in Acts, uh, I think there was 127 people that day, uh, the day of Pentecost, Uh, And it says in that scripture, when the Holy Spirit poured out on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people got added to that number. So right then, they're now another megachurch. So mega churches are not the problem. It's people and false prophets are, that are the problem. Uh, and I don't want to harp on that too much because Sunday I'm beginning the series on Jude and we will be talking a whole lot about false, prophet, false prophets and things like that because it was a problem then, it's a problem now. But mega churches are not the problem. There are people uh, that are pastors of mega churches that are the problem. But the reality is the majority of them are not an issue. But as soon as one of them or two of them, because there's hundreds, if not thousands of churches that have several thousand members in the United States that do a lot of good work that you hear nothing about. Mm -hmm. But as is typical, there it is, 98% of churches never get above 200 people. I know, I was just making sure. No, it was the 200. As is typical with anybody, as soon as someone of some type of status falls, which is, you see this with Diddy or someone else, as soon as someone of status or whatever celebrity status you want to call it, just because they have a bigger follow, following, mm-hmm. as soon as they fall, we love to jump at it and attack them. And you already have people that hate Jesus, that hate the church. And so as soon as you see a mega church or any pastor fall, and stumble, they get attacked, and oh, there it is. See, we knew Christians were the problem. Mega churches are the problem. 
No, we're supposed to be the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19, Mark 16, 15. Go into the world and make disciples. That is what we are supposed to do. Huh? Heaven's a mega church. What do you think? I was we're, no, no, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> we're supposed to be making disciples. We see this on the day of Pentecost. Over 3,000 people get added to the number. You see Jesus preaching to thousands of people at a time. Numbers are not the issue. It's people. It's false prophets that have crept in. That's Jude that have crept in. And that's Second Peter 2. Go read them. Study them. Come ready for Sunday. But it's false prophets that are the problem. But, the, but we don't focus on those. We've changed. Oh, there we go. We've changed the truth for a lie. So we take uh, what should be an open hand issue, which is... Uh, Delivery methods, clothing choices. Way to go, Ryan. Worship methods. He asked the question and I'm going to answer it. <laughs> worship methods. Uh, we take things that should be open-handed. The way music sounds, the way that you want to worship, the way that you know you lead worship, whatever. The, we take these open-handed issues and because there are personal preferences, we idolize them and we make them closed-hand issues, which they're not. Closed-hand issues is like... Jesus is the Son of God. We know that. He came down from heaven. He died and rose again on the third day for our sins so that when you confess your belief in, belief in him and follow him, that's a closed-hand issue. You have eternal life. The open-hand issue is, oh, they play contemporary worship instead of hymnals. They read the NIV instead of the ESV or instead of the KJV or instead of the New King James. The, 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 the problem is we keep taking personal preferences and putting them on a pedestal and a platform and freaking out. You are distracting me so much with that I'm microphone sorry. cable. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. You, I haven't talked but, in 20 minutes. Well, he asked the question. Um, no, that's not. So it's not that mega churches are the problem. It's just, it's people. It's always the people. It's the same thing when somebody says, oh, I was church hurt. You weren't church hurt. You were people hurt. You got hurt by somebody in the church that was hurting themselves. And it's unfortunate, but uh, you, get, you get a bad meal at a restaurant. You don't quit eating. You just stop going to that restaurant and you find a new one. So Kelly was saying, um, you know, how do people who had never heard the truth know they're being led astray? And the thing is, that's why you always say, do your research. Like, don't take what I'm saying as truth. That's why you, you know, go to a church. And I think that, you know, when you go to a new church, really, you know, check what the pastor's saying for several months, you know. And then I, I think there becomes some level of trust if time and time again it's biblically accurate. And then the other part about that is people that don't know to research it, unfortunately, they won't know. They won't know they're led astray. That's unless... why I harp so much on reading your Bible. Yeah. Because if you don't read the Bible, you're not going to know the Bible. You're not mm -hmm. going to know the word. And then that's the problem is, and, and every, we had a couple people, you said you hated the post about how not reading your Bible every day because you just don't want to. It's not a priority. That thing I shared from the other yeah, place. Yeah, I mean, I didn't say I hated it. <laughs> well, it's convicting. I just... And there's some days where I'll rude. miss maybe reading something, or I won't read my devotional plan. But the, the, the thing is just... If you're not in the word, you're not going to know the word. And if you don't know the word, you're not going to know that you're be, being led astray. And then how does Jesus deal with those who were led astray on judgment day? That's uh, unfortunately not think, a happy I answer. Think, I think we always, I think that, I think that, and this is just my opinion, and that I'm like the least biblically knowledgeable out of us four, so... Maybe Four. Me, yeah, your parents, me oh. and you. Anyway, um, I was just like thinking, I think I think that maybe, well, your dad already chimed in, so now I don't want to say anything. Go but ahead. I think that maybe we all kind of get an opportunity and we can ignore it. You know, we can ignore it or uh, we don't. And it, people that ignore it, there's one result, and the people that don't, it's a different result, you know? Um, but I think that, I think that we, we all get opportunities to change our life around. At one point of our life, we all get opportunities to change it around. I would like to think. That's just something I would like to think, you know? And Say it again. Like, we all, throughout our life, until the time we're born and until the time that we die... 
I think we all have an opportunity to change, to have our life changed. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we all have come across some point where it's a crossroad and we get an opportunity to follow Jesus. And I think sometimes it's more obvious than others. Yep. You know, but I, I, I would like to think that, but... Um, everybody gets the choice. Um, I think every, I think everybody gets a choice, and some people flat out, you know, we have free will. That's the really like that's the scary part. We have free will, and these questions are getting way too hard for me. You're gonna have to. Jump. <laughs> Thanks for not coming, Phil. Um, really appreciate so it. There's the t- and he 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 said it. It is it is hard, but that's a hard but true. And I'm not one to condemn anyone. And I'm not gonna. We will know people by their fruit. So you you can, for lack of a better term, judge someone by their fruit. If they're not producing fruit, they're not a, a, a true Christian. And people who are brand new and have never heard of Jesus. So Romans one twenty says that for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. Verse 21 says, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. So yes, there's something within all of us that knows there is a God. And even the people, we we choose to ignore it or we don't. And there is, I mean, literally right there in in his word, his divine power, his divine nature, his eternal nature, his, his eternal power, all of it has been revealed through creation. You can look around in creation and, and you just know this was created. It didn't just pop up. There was no pool of sludge and you know evolution and all this stuff just magically happened because somehow you can create something out of nothing that just doesn't make sense. There has to be a creator for, for there to be creation. And, and, and so with that, that's, that's the other thing, is that God is incredibly patient. He doesn't will that anyone should perish. It grieves him that people are perishing without coming to him, without giving their life to him and being servants to him and following him and loving him. It, that grieves him to know that because we are all his children, that we are just running astray like sheep. But unfortunately, that's just the reality of the situation, and that is the truth hurts, <laughs> is just we're without excuse. Uh, there, there is no excuse to not knowing God. Uh, it's, it's 100% a choice. Um, yeah, Mitch and you need to do that podcast soon. That'd be pretty cool. We'll, we'll get there. Put it on Spotify. Um, oh, my gosh, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Leave it down. I can't. Um, I don't know what uh, Kelly. I don't know what you mean by where did it go? About if you if you don't get this Bible, they don't get any better. I don't know what that means. You have to clarify. Um, But yes, taking taking it. Well, that's that's the thing. Uh, Taking accountability and doing your own research. Research. uh, Yes, you're supposed to. the, The thing is. They're not going with accountability if they're not doing their own research. Because the Bible tells us to test spirits, to test apostles, to test everything that you hear. You're supposed to test it against God's word and make sure that it's true. So if, like I was going back to the original point, if you're staying on track and you're staying in God's word and you have a relationship with him, if you know the word, you know when someone is lying to you. So just like, I mean, it, 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 unfortunately, that's just the reality of it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's, it's completely on you on judgment day. If you sit under someone and you're not studying the thing by yourself to see, are they correct? Are they leading me astray? If you're just sitting under them and trusting them, that's the reality of what I was saying earlier is there's going to be a lot of Christians that are in hell simply because... They sat in a church, they expected the pastor to be leading them in the right path, and they're completely being led astray. And the clearest example of this is, and and I'm sure I'll bring it up again Sunday, is these churches with rainbow flags out front and and gay and lesbian pastors in in the pulpit just completely 
giving you false doctrine and, 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 and just lies, sitting here telling you, oh, God loves you as you are, yes, but you don't have to stop being gay. You know, that's just not a thing. If you have a gay pastor, that's not a thing. You have a false prophet, and they're leading you astray. They're leading you into hell. The, the, God calls homosexuality an abomination. That's not fun. That's not sugarcoating it, but that is the reality of the situation. And people will say, oh, well, Jesus didn't say anything against it. Jesus said the, the, the standard of marriage is a man and a woman, one man and one woman, not one man and one man, not three men and, and one girl, nothing. There's none of that. It's one man and one woman. And it's just, it, it's on your head because you're supposed to be having a relationship with Jesus. You're supposed to be staying in his word. You're mm-hmm. supposed to be knowing this stuff. That's why you're supposed to be studying it and testing it. And you can't just come, even against me, don't come in the church and sit here and believe everything that I say Test it. Make sure. And, and if I say something that's wrong, point it out. Because I want to know. Because, you know, the, it's, it's, it's really easy to get in the moment and you go to, you go to say something and an entire different word comes out that you might not have meant, but you didn't catch it. And I think that's where a lot of people, you know, uh, get tripped up on. But the whole thing with just like the mega churches leading people astray. It's it's honestly it's not as often as people think, but simply because there's okay. mega churches and there's more people in there, people blow it out of proportion. And it, but it, we look at stuff like that, and we we just want to sit here and say, you know, this church is bad and this church is bad and this church is bad simply because they're big and we don't like the way they do things. But then we we sit back and we re- remain completely silent on. Uh, like the Methodists, how they've completely accepted LGBTQ and they're just allowing that stuff to be open in the pulpits. And sometimes, and sometimes like the mega churches, it's they don't get enough record. Like I just saw on there that what's um, Jensen Franklin's church? Free Chapel. They just donated a million dollars, just straight, straight up a million dollars. Elevation they did over $11 million on Love, just Love Week, and then their outreach also gave out... That wasn't all they did. $13 million. It was a million dollars of... It totaled, it, totaled, it totaled just under a million dollars, and they just bought, like, excavators, and it was just heavy machinery and donated it to um, the towns in North Carolina to get their dead out. Yeah. It was just really sad, but that was just one of the things that I read, and that wasn't the totality of what they donated and everything. Um, that was just what they did. Oh, that you like that comment? Yeah. You're supposed to have a relationship with Jesus, not your pastor. Boom, mic drop. Let's end on that. Have a great rest. I'm just kidding. No, that's perfect. That's we what I'm saying. We gotta get divorced. I'm sorry. We, well, <laughs> we gotta get divorced. No, <laughs> you're stuck. But no, that is the reality of the situation. There's, there's far too many people, and, and I pray that no one does this with me. Uh, and uh, unfortunately for dad, people have clearly already done it with you. Do not idolize me. I don't Do know not why. put me on a pedestal. I don't care one Just rip kidding. about my name. All I want is to make Jesus more famous, make Jesus more known. That is my whole goal. My whole thing of success is hearing well done good and faithful servant, finishing my fight, because I'm not supposed to fight your fight. I'm not supposed to fight your fight. I'm supposed to do my race. You got to do your race. But people come into churches and they get led astray because they want the pastor to be doing their race. And then they just come in and they listen to something and it gets completely twisted. And since they don't know the word, they just go with it. And then they just get gradually led astray and it's sad. I mean, it's sad. It's very depressing that people will sit in churches and still end up in hell simply because they, they do nothing to have a relationship with God for themselves. That's, that's, that's incredibly sad. That I can't think of anything more depressing than, than thinking you're getting to heaven because you're a Christian and you wake up in hell. I feel like you're yelling at me right now. I'm just passionate. Yeah. Well, Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. That was good. I like that. Very emotional. To have a relationship with you. <laughs> very emotional. Today. Not demure. I'm not demure today. I'm not very cutesy. You're very cute. You're always I'm very cute. emotional today. Um, but that's just, ma'am, that, that was a very, you did great just sitting over there for like 35 minutes while I spilled all that out. I wasn't knocking you. I was just saying that was a lot. With I think that you were you. knocking me. 
That was a little rude. We need another question because we don't have anything to talk about. <laughs> we don't have to keep going. Kelsey, <laughs> but it's, it's all black and white written in the word uh, unless you have red letters in your Bible. I do. I like that. Study Bible. Yeah, a couple of mine. Jared don't won't let me borrow it. any of his Bibles. All that is his the editions. biggest lie you have, have ever have said. And we are in the house of God, and you're sitting here lying. I only have one little lies. study Bible, and I'm like, oh, can I see your notes and learn off of them? And you're Go like, get yeah. them. They're no, you won't everywhere. Let you won't let me. I'll just have to figure out Jesus by myself. Like well, that's said. good, because you should. Like you said, it's fine. Don't trust me. I won't have a relationship with my pastor. Good Lord. Well, <laughs> as fun as this okay, is, so I'm hungry. Race and running in. What? This Kelsey, me Kelsey, or the other Kelsey? Race and running is a potty word for Remember, Kelsey. that's Mitch under Amanda's account because his phone is dead. Oh, I was like, Amanda is being like super sassy <laughs> to me today. <laughs> um, no. Oh, so you're going to have a special guest. Not next Wednesday because why? Revival night, everybody. Won't have family room. I'm getting really tired. <laughs> why? <laughs> and then next, when, the following Wednesday. Oh, that was Wednesday, right in the microphone. I'm so sorry. <laughs> the following Wednesday. What date is that? I don't, I don't know. know. You're going to have a special guest speaker person, person with you. The, the, on the 16th? Yeah. Oh, here. Okay. Mm-hmm. I was like, what are we yep. doing on the it's Wednesday? It's not going to be me because I'm not doing this anymore. It's going to be a, a hand puppet. Not gonna be, we I'm going to have this in the camera. <laughs> and then it's not going to be your dad because he's retired apparently and he's not doing anything anymore. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. He's going to be like, I've been doing that for 47 years already. Blah, 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 blah. That's coming. Watch. It's coming. So anyway, I'm not yeah. waiting a minute and a half to see if he's. Um, I feel like I had something else to say, but what? I don't know. I was reading your thing. Okay. Um, what else do we have coming up? That's it. Sunday. Yeah. Oh, he did emojis. No, that's it's not far enough. Um, yeah. So, so oh, my battery's about to die. Sunday, I'm starting the series. Do you have on homework for them? Jude, I do have homework. Okay. Sunday. Oh, I've, oof, I got homework. Mm-hmm. Um, Sunday, we're beginning another series called Contend. Um, look that up. Actually, what we need to do before Sunday is I need to ro- watch Rocky 1 and 2. And I know that you'll hate doing that because um, that's not your favorite movie. Why, those, why the first one? Because he loses. Well, I mean, the third one, he loses... As well, and that one's like the best one. Okay, that's but that's after he's established. And he Anyways, also, he Sunday I'm starting. I mean, okay, I'm not going. The, it's the first two. That's it. That, that would no. Okay, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, Sunday we're starting the. Throw me so off. And then he gets rid of butt kiss in one of them too. I think it's the second one that makes me really sad. I'm not watching that one with you. That part's sad. Okay. When he get, has I'm to get all, I'm only, I only care about the first two right now. Okay. Well, you're going to be upset <laughs> because it's sad when Buck has, gets written. Mute gone. this. Uh, so Sunday, we're starting the series on Jude Contend. Uh, go read it. Read it several times a day. It's 25 verses. I mean, I, it, there's no reason why you can't do that. Uh, yeah, so Jared Sunday, and we're just going to slowly go through. I'm probably only going through the first four <laughs> verses. And as always, church, as I always tell you, make sure you pay attention to the words. Always pay attention to the words. And something else you should get with your Bible is a concordance so you can look up what the original meaning of the words would be. Uh, and, and, and in addition to that is... Uh, with the revival night, which is again next Wednesday, no live stream, no family room. Um, I'm planning on doing the parable of the sower, so you can go read that. But come ready, come expecting, come prayed up, 
Pray for our church. Pray for us. Pray for your pastors. Pray for, pray for the lost. Let's let's start praying more for the lost that this church becomes that hot spot of holiness, like I've been saying, and people just begin to get drawn to it because we are in the last days. Time is running out, and I'm feeling more and more urgent. The, the more that the days pass by, there's more urgency. I want you guys to get more urgent about it. I want you to get more passionate about it. I want you to get more involved with inviting people. Because it's great if we all get to heaven, but I want to see your friends there with you. I want to see your family there with you. I want to see your kids. If you've got split families, let them have both parents there with them. Because that would mean <laughs> a lot to them. But that, that's, that's just the thing. is We're in the last days. We're supposed to be reaching the lost. We're supposed also, to be reaching the lost. pray for the young families in this church. Yes. There's getting more and more. Yeah. But definitely pray for, I think that there's, there's particular people that are getting just absolutely mm-hmm. wrecked, um, that are young, 30 to 40 year olds that are just getting wrecked and it's getting like Brooke and I were talking on the phone yesterday or maybe it was today. I don't know. I feel like all the days have just kind of squished together and like something had happened. So I was crying and I was upset and she was talking about like how my car is still broken down and now there's something else wrong with my car. So we still are sharing a vehicle that literally just had the AC fixed. Um, And she was calling me. She's like, yeah, well, I'm having to pull over at the gym because my car is making this uh, really weird noise and Ronnie's having to leave work and and come and um, see what's going on. And she just, she has such a great attitude about stuff. Like I could never be... Brooke, like ever, but um, what? I'm what did listening. I do? You haven't done anything. Oh, um, you know she's just so being super positive, and she goes, you know, I don't know what in it because she's been hit with one thing after another, and so did I, and and it was just like to this morning, um, was just <laughs> bad, and then dealing with something with court on and Riley school was behind. It was just it was. It was not, it was not good. It was bad. And anyway, so we were talking about the vehicles and I said, well, what's going on with your car? And she's like, well, um, I don't know. Just feel when I start to hit the brakes, it just feels like my tires are square and they're just kind of, you know, (laughs) like, so, and she, and then, you know, Rodney's car, the power steering is doing the same exact thing that my car is doing. And that's their two vehicles. And he depends on his for work. It's just wild. And I'm not trying to complain and throw everybody's business out there, but, um, she was so funny. She goes, well, you know, I don't know. Uh, she's like, I, I don't, I, I can't take like another week of this. Ever since you started like preaching the the series, mm-hmm. like we, obviously we've been dealing with a lot, but it, like it intensified and then it intensified for them too. Yeah, hell got really mad. Well, I got mad? Hell. Oh, and I thought it said y'all got really mad. <laughs> and, um. She's like, I don't know how much more I can take. She's like, I don't know. I don't know what you want me to do, God. You just want me to come, like, lay in the church for a couple days and just lay there? She's like, just tell me what you want me to do. I don't know. I'll do anything. Just tell me what you want me to do. And I was like, well, I don't really think it's God. She's like, I know, but I'm just saying. Like, what do you want me to do so that you'll fight back on all this stuff? Like, it was just so really, uh, you know, pray for the young families in this church are just really getting rocked and it's be I think it's a big part and it's a lot of people that are close to us like sorry guys um I break the vehicles I touch and my friends get messed up but um yeah so like it's I think it's a lot of the young leaders that are supposed to really help us out and really be there with us to build up you know obviously I think the devil's just trying to make that stop yeah, and the greater the the greater the anointing, the the harder and the bigger the attack. Yeah, and it, it's so. just the, and the unfortunate thing is, and something we'll see Here's with the parable Don't of the sower <laughs> is just what, that um, I don't know what that was. The, uh, the with the parable of the sower, I mean that's just <laughs> don't unfortunately. Let me drive your car and don't don't be let friend. don't let <laughs> and you'll be fine. Don't let your walk with God get choked out. Um, 
You've got to endure to the end. Mm-hmm. You, you have to endure to the end. You have to finish your fight. You have to finish your race. The whole thing with the devil is to just get you sidetracked, mm-hmm. to get you sidetracked. If he can't stop you from doing one thing, he'll he'll make you do so many other things. That way you can't focus on anything at all and put, your, put anything into anything. And that's his whole goal. And that's the whole thing, too, is just like he doesn't have to get you to stop believing in God. He just has to get you to start believing in other things that will lead you away from God. Or not even necessarily lead you away from God, but stuff that you shouldn't be dealing with, stuff you shouldn't be dabbling in. Just anything that he can get you you to trip up and stumble on. It starts with, oh, you had a really stressful day today. Have a glass of wine. We'll have another one. We'll have another one. And then the next day, oh, today was like super stressful too. I talked to a lady today who said her son is drinking every day and he's living at home with her and... um she went in there and she was she was just counting the beer cans just from the night before and she mm. was like I don't even know how somebody can drink that much and it's just that's the unfortunate a side of, effect of sin. Yeah, a friend um, of mine's uh, dad died years ago drinking a handle of vodka a day, and I mean he died within I don't I don't remember the time frame, but it, it I was I can't imagine it was very quickly doing that, especially to do that every day. Whew. The more you drink, the more you need. So, anyway, on that oh. depressing note. Yeah, hope with you guys that, have a we're going to end. On a <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that's a good point from the other Kelsey. Uh, when you're trying to draw closer to God, the enemy throws everything at you. Oh, yeah, that's, they've been through a lot. That's the perfect the thing. As soon as you start <laughs> pressing into God, he's going, the enemy is going to attack you with everything he has, mm-hmm. and it's going to get completely worse. The closer you get to your next door of opportunity, as soon as you're close to that door, and, and the reality is he's only trying to get you to stop. That's all it is. Uh, he has really like no power over you because you've got the power of God in you. You've got the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead and greater is he that is in us, greater than he that is in me, than he that is in the world. I mean, he can't, he can't really do anything. He just likes to be really loud and make you think he can. That's his whole goal is just to make you stop. Literally and knows the only like thing that. you can do, the <laughs> only thing you can do is just keep your foot on the gas. Do not stop. God has never failed once. Mitch Michard, 2024. That's knuckles. That's his bro. quote. That's what? That's knuckles. Anyways, with that, because I'm ready. Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.